Creating a good selection in Photoshop is a critical skill. In this lesson, I'll show you how you can isolate areas in an image for retouching, painting, copying, or pasting. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I am choosing File, Browse and Bridge, bringing Bridge up, and I'm opening up two images. One is the flower underscore two TIFF file, and one is sky.jpg. Now these are located in your Chapter 04 folder in your project files for PSCS4 Advanced. I'm right clicking, you can double click or you can control click if you're on the Mac, and I'm choosing open with Photoshop CS4. Now the two images open and immediately, after clicking on the color profile warning, I am going to go up to the application bar, click on the arrange documents drop down menu and choose to float all windows and just kind of push the sky image off to the right. Next, and real quickly, I'm going to go through some of these selection tools, starting with a rectangular marquee tool. I know this is an advanced video, but there are some fundamentals that people who have even worked in Photoshop for seven or eight years have totally missed. So starting with a rectangular marquee tool, I'm clicking and dragging, and of course, that is creating a selection. Now, one thing to make clear is that if you need to extend, you can see right here off to the right that I did not extend my selection far enough to encompass the entire flower. What I see a lot of people do is try to use the technique to add to a selection, which is holding down your shift key and clicking and dragging and matching that exactly. So by holding your shift key down, you can, of course, add to a selection. Look at that little bump in there, though. I am pressing Control Z. If I need to add to a selection, I can either hold my shift key down and use the selection tool to add to a selection, or better yet, select Transform Selection. This is very different than the Edit Free Transform. In here, when I grab these handles, I'm actually only transforming my selection, which is huge. I can reposition my selection, I can put it where I want, and when I hit the Enter key or hit the Commit button up in the Control Panel, my selection has been edited and fixed. This works with any selection. In fact, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but I'll present it because some of you might have really odd selections to make. If I choose Select, and I choose Transform Selection, I can even hold down my Control key or my Command key, and I can even skew my selections and hit the Return key to say that's the selection that I want. Now, I'm pressing Control D or Command D to deselect. This is also available under the Select menu, along with Shift Control D, which is huge, because if you're working in Photoshop and you accidentally deselect a selection, you can reselect the last selection, and this goes for any document you have open. So if you have five documents open and you had five different selections that got deselected, Photoshop will remember each one of those unique selections for each image. Pretty cool. Okay, so moving on, I'm deselecting Control D or Command D. I want to switch to the elliptical marquee tool. Notice that if I press M, I am already on the rectangular marquee tool, but if I press Shift M, it switches me to the hidden elliptical marquee tool, which now if I want to make a circular selection, I can click and drag and hold the Shift key down, and that provides a circle. Now what if I want to create a selection from a center point, whether it be a bicycle wheel, a clock, or somebody's face? I'm deselecting Control D or Command D. I can hold down my Alt or Option key and drag a selection from a center point, even add in the Shift key down to make it a perfect selection from the center. Now let's take this a step further. I'm going to press Control D to deselect again. I'm going to press Control Zero. You can press Command Zero to see the whole image. And I'm going to use the Magic Wand tool. And the Magic Wand tool is hidden behind the Quick Selection tool. The Quick Selection tool is awesome, by the way. I'm going to show you more about that in the next lesson. But I want you to choose the Magic Wand tool right now. Click on the petals. And depending upon whether you click in a darker area or a lighter area, you might get a slightly different selection than me. Something to consider. When you use the Magic Wand tool, the default is that your tolerance is set at 32. 
the tolerance is how many shades of the particular color are you going to activate out of 256. So 32 is a rather sizable range of color. Now another thing to notice is that there is a button up here that says contiguous. That means we please only take touching color. So if I click on the red flowers, only that one particular red flower is selected. Uncheck contiguous, all the red flowers are selected. What if I want more of the red flower selected? I can come up and change my tolerance, maybe to a 75, click off and back on, and now I have a larger selection. I'm putting contiguous back on. I'm pressing Control D to deselect. I'm selecting the flower now with that 75 radius, and you'll see that now I've got a much better selection of the petals. I want to add that center part to the selection. By switching to the lasso tool, I can hold my shift key down and just circle this entire center area. So the point being that you can mix and match selection tools as well. When you have any selection tool active, if you look up in your control panel, there's this really great feature that was added in CS3 and continues to be improved in CS4, which is the Refine Edge feature. And when I click on this button up here in the control panel, you'll see that I get a preview. Now I can change the way my preview looks by just clicking across these buttons at the bottom. I actually prefer to have that white background. Once this is open, I can choose how much of a radius is going to be affected by my changes in the rest of this window. So I'll leave this just at two pixels. I can make my selection more contrasty. You'll see that it becomes much harder on the edge or less contrasty. If I have a really jagged selection, I can smooth it out. You'll see that smoothing my selection out. I can feather it. Now this is what I use this window for all the time because it is really hard to tell how much your image is actually going to vignette. And that's what feathering is all about, vignetting or feathering that edge. And if I choose to feather one image at 10 pixels, it could be very different than when I select another image. And that's because it's based upon the resolution of the image. If you have a web image and you choose to feather by 10 pixels, it's going to be a tremendous amount as compared to a high resolution 300 dpi image. You might hardly see that feather at all. I can expand and contract that selection. Now I'm going to increase the radius a little bit and increase the feather a little bit just to kind of spread this out. And we'll go about a 5.5 area here. Now when I click OK, I simply see that I have a selection area. One thing I am really big on is if you're selecting something, you want to move it to another image, please don't just grab it with the Move tool and move it because if you want to recover any of the rest of the image later, you have no opportunity to do that. I have the selection. I hold down my Alt or Option key, double click on the word background. I am in fact going to name this correctly by double clicking on layer. Call this flower. Now what can I do with this? I've got the selection. Notice that as soon as I turn it into a layer, I can add a layer mask. And if I have a selection intact and I click on this button, I've added a mask. Why? It looks like it's just been deleted. Uh-uh. Hold down my shift key. I can turn off this mask or on at any time. If I position this flower so I can see it with the sky and I take the move tool, I can even drag and drop this image over to the sky hold down my shift key, I can click to release that mask. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. And now I'm looking at this saying, hmm, you know, I would really like to see more of those petals. Notice the handles, the corners, they're highlighted. That means I'm working on my image. I can click on the mask. I can take my paintbrush. I can paint with white to recover the image that I want to bring back. So I can fine tune my selection. I can press X and I can get rid of that image. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little better. Painting with black. Don't want that. Press X. Do want that. X. Don't want that. 
X do want that perfect for helping you to edit and don't forget that if you want more of that feathering or vignette look make your brush maybe a little bit bigger press shift left bracket to make it a little bit softer and then as you paint you are getting a more feathered edge so there's lots of exciting selection techniques to use and we're going to get into some more advanced ones as we progress through this chapter